Next, we want to look at the problem of displacement. Uh, so this is something that certainly would come up in, let's say, like a physics context. Um, so the scenario, and we'll, we'll draw this in the plane, is imagine that you've got some vector-valued function, and you've graphed it. And so let's say the graph uh, does something like this. And it goes around, maybe it passes through itself, ends up over there. And, and so this is the graph of some vector-valued function r of t with t running from some initial value, say, t0, to some final value, t1. Right? And so you'd have r of t0, position vector for the initial point, over here. You got R of T1, position for the final point, and you know, you might have some intermediate point, you know. In general, you got some R of T, right? And you imagine this starts here and the arrow kind of gets longer, goes around, shrinks, comes this way, grows a bit, right? Traces out the curve. Okay. So the displacement is a vector quantity, um, something which, which comes up and, and matters in a lot of physics contexts. And, and the displacement, it's a vector, uh, but it's a constant vector. And, and what the displacement is, is it's just the difference between your final point and your initial point, right? Okay. Um, and so... What it really is, is it's a, it's a change. If we think of this as a position function, it's a change in position, right? Final position minus the initial position gives the change, right? And so the change is here, right? That's the displacement vector, d going from the initial point to the final point. Um, now, keep in mind, this is not the same thing as distance traveled. Distance traveled is a scalar quantity. This is a vector quantity, right? It gives you sort of this magnitude and the direction. Um, and the distance traveled, of course, depends on a lot more than the initial and final points. The distance traveled depends on the sort of path that you took to get there. Um, this being a somewhat more windy path, we're gonna get, we're gonna get a different result, right? Um, and by the way, what is the distance traveled? If we wanted the distance traveled, um, well, we know what that is. That's arc length, right? The distance traveled is just the length of the curve. Um, and we know how to calculate that, right? The distance traveled would just be, we usually call it S for arc length, right? The integral from T0 to T1, square root of, and I guess we need to kind of maybe say that this R of T is, say, X of T, Y of T, oops, vector valued, um, right? And, and so we've already seen back in the chapter on, on plane curves, how to calculate that distance traveled, right? Um, by the way, this expression that you integrate when you're computing arc length might look familiar to you, right? Now that we've kind of talked about vectors, you're familiar with vectors and vector terminology, that's just a magnitude, right? Um, this is just the sort of integral from t0 to t1 of the magnitude of, well, let's call it v of t, the velocity. Um, I mean, we're not quite there yet. Uh, or we can also call it r prime. This is coming up in later chapters, right? But if you think about what should be sort of the change in position, it should be velocity, right? And, and integrating the, the velocity should give you back the, the distance traveled. Um, so, you know, we, we'll see that 
later on, right? Um, it's not the magnitude of R of t because we do have to take these derivatives here, right? Um, it's the magnitude of what we will soon be able to call R prime, right? All right, so that's displacement. It's just the difference in the two positions. Um, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at an example to explore it a little bit further.